Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about solubility and we're going to particularly focus on the solubility of organic compounds. These concepts will help you understand lecture material, but they're also going to be useful in terms of helping you develop an intuition in lab later on. Dissolution is the process of a solid separating into its individual molecules or ions when immersed into a liquid. And the general rule is like dissolves like in terms of the polarity of the solvent and the polarity of the molecules comprising the solid. Let's take a look at the most abundant solvent here on Earth, and that is water. Remember that water molecules have a strong permanent dipole moment that is pointing toward the oxygen atom of the water molecule and has a partial positive end where the hydrogens are. And because of the strong dipole moment, it is good at dissolving other polar solids or ions. When we drop a chunk of salt into the water, the ions will separate, and as they're separating, the water molecules will swarm them in a way that will stabilize these ions. So the water molecules will orient their dipole moments such that the partial positive charge of the water molecules will be facing the chlorine ion, and the partial negative charge, meaning the oxygen, will be facing the sodium ion. And this kind of rearrangement of the water molecules to stabilize the ion is called hydration of ions. Similar thing happens when we put polar or charged organic molecules into water. The water molecules will arrange themselves and solubilize the organic. And in most polar and charged organic molecules, there will be lone pairs, and these lone pairs will form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. More generally, we could say that polar and charged organic molecules are dissolved by polar solvents, and more particularly by polar protic solvents. This would include water and a variety of alcohols, such as ethanol, methanol. Now, what happens when we put a nonpolar chunk of solid into water, like naphthalene? In this case, the water molecules don't really know what to do with the naphthalene because naphthalene does not have a dipole moment. In this case, it's actually better for the naphthalenes to stick together because they can interact favorably through dispersion forces, whereas the water molecules would not provide any additional stabilization for the naphthalenes to come apart and go into solution. So more generally, we could say that nonpolar organic molecules are not dissolved by polar solvents. Now, what if we threw a chunk of naphthalene into benzene? Well, in this case, the naphthalenes would actually separate because of the favorable interactions with benzene. Benzene has a very similar structure to naphthalene, so naphthalene can form dispersion forces with benzene just as well it could do with itself. So more generally, we could say that nonpolar organic molecules are dissolved by nonpolar solvents. The rule of thumb for solubility is that like dissolves like. So polar solvents will dissolve ions, polar molecules, and charged molecules. And the solubility of an organic molecule in a polar solvent will be proportional to the molecule's polarity. So the more polar the molecule, the more it will be soluble in a polar solvent. And polar solvents generally do not dissolve nonpolar molecules very well. However, nonpolar solvents do dissolve nonpolar molecules. But nonpolar solvents do not dissolve ionic solids. And the more similar the structure of the solvent is to that of the solute, the better the solubility. So how do we evaluate the polarity of a solvent? We do that by comparing the dielectric constant of the solvent. The dielectric constant is a unitless number, and it is defined as the ratio of the capacitance through the medium of interest versus the capacitance through vacuum. So here are some dielectric constants for some common solvents. And you can see that water has the largest dielectric constant, and that is because of how polar it is as a solvent. So the greater the dielectric constant of a solvent, the greater its polarity.